It's October 21st, I think, and you're watching Mods on Air. It's two FPS, three RPGs, and five sim type games. Yeah. I think you'll be able to come up with one here. I'm actually pulling this one hard. Ask all the people that need hacks to play Call of Duty. I can hear you groaning oh, inwardly yeah. every time sins mentioned, you're just cringing. Oh. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to episode 353 of Mods on Air. We're going to bring you the weekend gaming news as modders, developers, and gamers ourselves. I am Foilman, and also on the show today we have with us... Ah, good morning, Welshie. Ah, so off. So off. And we also have Ham with us. Hello, Ham. Good morning, everyone. And Strider's with us. Hello, Strider. Hello, everybody. So before we actually begin, let me inform you all that this show may ab end abruptly. Uh, I don't know if the internet is going to continue to work, and I'm also expecting the cable guy to come here and see that the internet is suddenly working and therefore have to do this again next weekend. But aside from that, uh, this show is being recorded live, so anything and everything could happen. Uh, we're going to have some topics in no particular order. Uh, <laughs> and for those of you who haven't heard the show before, there may be some explicit language or adult themes. It happens in life. It happens here. That's right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I like the explanation. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, what's been going on in the past two weeks? See, last week we couldn't do the show because, uh, what was it, 15 to f somewhere between 5 and 15 minutes right before the show started, my internet died. In other words, I had about um, 1 meg download speed and zero upload. So that meant no show. I got to do a little preview of a show, like the you know when I pre-show the show before the show, and it's too many shows. You get the idea. And so I'm hoping that doesn't happen here. <laughs> so we're going to sort of uh, fumble our way through this week's topics and uh, some of the stuff that we didn't get to pick up on from the week before. And I really don't care what kind of order that we do this in. I can, um, you know what, I'm going to start with some of the stuff that I wanted to bring up a little bit on last week, which the topics are still somewhat relevant. Let's talk a little bit about this new mouse, right? Because uh, I, I was just hearing from somebody, uh, uh, what, who was that a moment ago? Ham, perhaps? He's hoping that Windows 8 is going to save him. Oh, well, yeah. if that if that is the case, that he better get his hands on this new Logitech mouse, you know, because when when Windows 8 comes out, it's not going to necessarily be <laughs> the operating system you're used to. You're going to end up needing this touchpad kind of crap. It looks like something from Star Trek. Yeah, yeah it looks like uh, the the original Star Trek series <laughs> communicator. <laughs> yeah, that is like some sort of. Medicaid device for for old people. Like I fall in and I can't get up, and you press that button. Nice. <laughs> Comes with the with the free uh, blood checker for if you've got diabetes. Yes, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> it does kind of look like it's got like a little indented bit. Like yes. you put your thumb in. Yeah. Yeah, and as Morpheus or or somebody uh, grind time points out, it'll also be a garage door opener as on the side. Um, mm -hmm. Start your car with it. <laughs> It's a so oh yeah look at the battery life on this is expected for as long as you are going to be able to stand Windows eight eighteen months. <laughs> Do you think it's going to last that long? <laughs> well, of course the battery life is if if they're designing it for touch screens, you're not going to use that. You're going to be touching the screen. So of course the battery life is going to last for eighteen months. Yep. <laughs> I don't understand the point of this whole Windows eight thing. It's it's going to get out of hand really soon, right? When are they doing the official launch on, launch on Windows 8? When they decide to, you know, yank every other Windows product off the shelf so you can't buy it when it's you need it. October 26th. So, right. So uh, it's just a few days away. Next week. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? They, they, being Microsoft, they're spending uh, either a billion or over a billion dollars on the Windows 8 advertising campaign. And for that much money... I better be convinced like that this is something I need to use. That's a lot of money to blow to to have anybody unconvinced still that uh that this is not the next step, next logical step. But I guess we'll who are see. they competing with? Who are they competing with? But I mean, really? I mean they... Well, no, no, no. It, it, I think it's more than that. I think that that Microsoft as a corporation every second year or every second iteration of their operating system, it's not every second year, but every second iteration of their operating system has to fit because that way they've got a tax write-off for business losses. 
<laughs> because then the the next one that comes out is actually the Salvation Fix, and well, if you look at you it, if you look at their corporation historically, that's essentially what they do is they throw this turd out there that everybody has to do has to use, like everything ah. had to be Vista. You had to have Vista, and what it was, uh -oh. Vista sucked. Uh oh, bye, foil. No, I'm here. Just keep going. I'll, I'm here. <laughs> well, I was gonna say you have to wonder if they like put out a terrible one on purpose, per just so that you have to buy the next one after that. Or they I lower can't the stand bar. this anymore. If yeah. if if they lower the bar and get you used to this piece of shit, then when something comes out that's not as good as it could have been, but it's better than the the crap exactly. that you got, <laughs> that got forced but down Vista your throat. Like you know what? Perfect example because. This yeah. is so terrible. Everyone's like, Jesus, I'll buy seven just so I can have this. I'll do yeah. it. Don't worry. And you have to. Do they do that on purpose? That's, that's, a, that's an interesting uh, cons uh, conspiracy theory right there. Well, here's, here's something kind of weird. I read just yesterday, it was a quick blurb about um, the, the guy that owns or runs Salesforce, the, the, the cloud based um, customer management system or whatever it is. But um, this guy says. He's got a lot, of, a lot of clout in some circles, not, not too many that really matter. But um, he says that Windows has become irrelevant. And um, he says with everything moving to phones and tablets, Windows is just is no longer needed. And when, when you put that up against this idea that Windows 8 is like a tablet operating system, it's almost like Microsoft realizes this as well, that Windows is going to become irrelevant pretty soon. So we need to redesign everything to... To, to be relevant, we need to redesign Windows to appear as a, like a tablet operating system. But you can't operate, like you look at a, a business or you look at corporations, they're not going to run on tablets. They're, you're still going to need the desktop PC. You're still going to need an operating system for that desktop PC. Are you going to go to switch to Mac because they've got Oracle? Well, Mac cost, it costs too much money for a company to switch to Macs. That's the problem. But if you uh, if you stop developing operating systems for a PC, you force you force that issue. Like, is this well, a larger conspiracy where Microsoft is tired of making money and they want to give it <laughs> all to? Uh, <laughs> they want to buy the stock think, next no, year. <laughs> po give it posthumously to Steve Jobs. Like, yeah, I think uh, it's it's more to do with the phones than anything. It's the phones and mobile. the tablets because it's it's the trying. They've finally realized that Apple is kicking their ass. And it's like, well, we really need to do something, so let's but, let's do phones because the last but, Windows phone was terrible. I know because I had one. <laughs> uh, but nothing's like, gonna nothing's gonna change with that. Like, no. uh, developing developing Windows eight and saying it's a tablet or a phone operating system, great. But don't say you know what this is gonna be what's gonna be on your PC, because that's not gonna work. People aren't gonna be sitting in an office trying to do productivity on their phones and, and their tablets, they're still going to need that mouse and keyboard. And I think what's, what's become apparent is Microsoft doesn't care anymore. They, they've moved from um, supporting the enterprise to supporting um, consumers because that's where the money is. People want their iPads, people want their, their phones, and they, they are after the money. Not necessarily. But the thing is, is if and this is a problem with American corporations is they're chasing after something rather than being ingenuitive with it. And I see it, I see it in, in all industries. Rather than coming up with an ingenuitive idea that's going to make you money, they're chasing after something that's already somebody else's. Like in, in my, my uh, other life, my, the crane industry, American companies are all chasing after um, the market that they've given up. They were like, oh, it's our market. And somebody else came in and stole that market from them. Now they're like, oh, well, there's all this money that could be made in this market. We should get some of it. Okay, but that ship has already sailed. You guys, you know, you, sh you shot yourself in the foot just like, oh, we're, you know, we're, we're here and they're going to buy us. Oh, wait, how come they're buying something else now? You know, and, and they're, they're like, oh, we want that back. Well, people have moved on. That ship has sailed. The, the, that dollar is spent. You need to come up with something that's new and ingenuitive, not try and say, you know what, Apple's making a killing at this. Let's, we'll make a killing at it too by just throwing out Windows 8. But you're not. You're going to fail because you're, you, you've got to come up with something that's brand new and ingenuitive to get people to change from what they're already using. 
just because you come out with Windows 8, which is going to be the same on your phone as it is on your tablet, as, as it is on your PC, who thought that out? Because people are going to look at this and say, you know what? My iPhone works just fine. I don't need to have, uh, and I know how to use a mouse and keyboard. I'm not retarded. So no, I don't need Windows 8. And they're just, I, I think they're going to drive, I think they're going to drive clients further away. It, it certainly might. I think it's got an equal potential to backfire. In one corner, you've got people who are so familiar with Windows and have been using Windows for a very long time, and they're going to be like, what the hell is this? And then other people are going to be like, oh, this is just like my phone. Great. And then you've got some people who are going to be convinced by um, a billion-dollar advertising campaign. So, well, well, there are there's yeah. two industries that we're talking about. We're talking about the consumer industry, which is all we've talked about so far. But what about the business industry that ne that uh, Strider started to bring up? How are we going to get the businesses to turn around and make these soft make the software for a different operating system? Yeah, I, I just want to I, I just want to comment on something that Grind Time's written there too. Windows 8 is going to be sweet on the Microsoft Surface, except they just had a press release this this weekend on Twitter saying that at launch, Windows 8 will not be compatible with the Microsoft Surface. <laughs> oh, I missed that. <laughs> what oh, I missed that one. the fuck well, are you guys doing? <laughs> well, look, because it's it's the Windows, it's Windows RT, which is pretty much Windows RT is Microsoft's response to the iPad, and and their sort of um, one up is that oh well it comes with Office, it it comes with Office like Home and Student or something. So you've got Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and that comes bundled with it. And so that's that's what they believe is going to be the thing to one up everybody because the App Store we know is as compared to to um, Apple's App Store is weak at launch. And so, yeah, it's, it's true, though. But, yeah, at launch, the Surface will be incompatible with Windows 8 because there, it, it runs a different operating system despite looking the exact same. It's running uh, OS X. <laughs> <laughs> which is another, uh, another mess, which is what Strider was pointing out earlier, how the, what the new OS X isn't going to be compatible with Flash. They're taking yeah. that out again. Oh, yeah, they're, take, they're taking the OS X compatibility for Flash out, and Mac is pointing its users to Oracle. If you want to use the internet on an, on a Mac product, you have to use Oracle. Cause you know what I'd like to see is like somebody like Google come out with an operating system. They did already, and <laughs> nobody yeah, cared. Yeah, but something that we can actually use and that people care about, just purely so Microsoft can go, oh, we better do something useful. That's what Android well, is supposed to be, yeah. Yeah, and right. you got Android. You've got Chrome OS. Oh, <laughs> Chrome OS. That's you don't hear much about that for a reason. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Google schemes that just disappears into the background. Google's just got too much money. They're like, you know what? Let's try something because we need I, to spend I think some money they've on got something. Like some sort of. You don't need to do like a raffle and you put a load of names in the thing and you turn it around and then I, I just like to think they've got loads of wacky ideas written in them and they just. <laughs> Let's make a Google car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that Let's is that okay. Google Facebook? That'll work. There is a Google car. You I, you, that's not, <laughs> yeah, there's not a Google car. There is a car. They made cars. They are making cars, and they've been trying out these cars that drive themselves on the road. Google is doing and, it. They have over two hundred miles, or two thousand miles. No, not maps. The car that drives itself, being created yeah. by Google, that they are actually deploying and have allowed in California now. My yeah, God. I think that's how they came up with it. Well, she like they had uh, two hats or two bags with like scrap <laughs> names in it, yeah, and like, somebody, like random ideas in there. <laughs> no drivers in one, and the other says cars, and like yes, together. Oh no, I, I think what they have is a hat, and it all says is Google, and then there's a bunch of things in the other hand. So we have the Google car and the Google glasses, and coming the... <laughs> coming soon, the Google banana phone. <laughs> <laughs> So also Microsoft, though, you know, Microsoft, it doesn't just stop there. They're also going on with, um, what is this, Microsoft Points. Did you see that the, they finally, oh, yes. it, they're noticing something. They're noticing that uh, people would be more apt to spend real money than, than to buy, spend money on points and then spend points on things. I'm, 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 I'm actually kind of torn between this because this marks the end of the Xbox 360 mm -hmm. is what this does. Because... Mm -hmm. And and it's also going to mark the end of the easy money for them because parents would buy Microsoft points for their kids, 
so they can spend. Yeah. But like parents GameStop. aren't going to give Cash parents aren't going games. to give their kids their credit card number. Yeah. It ain't no. gonna happen. <laughs> Here you go. Here's a uh, hundred and fifty dollars. Buy yourself two games. Or yeah. here's it's... a whole bunch of Microsoft points. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, here's here's anyone, a card. It's safe. I figured out what conversion rate is yet. The what? It's like the conversion rate of, of well, dollars. Well, there would be no to, conversion uh, date. No oh. conversion rate now with the with the new method. But and, and well, do you feel any safer with the idea that they're actually going to have like a whole wallet system? Right? Isn't I that think, what this is oh, going to be? Oh, you mean or? like what PlayStation's done? Maybe they're not yeah, I was like, just going to say, it, it, you know, they're they're taking a page again. Microsoft's lack of innovation. They're taking a page from PlayStation's book because it's worked so well for PlayStation to be able oh to take goodness. everybody's credit card information and give it away, <laughs> keep it safe. Yeah. <laughs> um, they, they, I know they're going to have Microsoft points um, still work alongside uh -oh. real money. Yeah. His turn. Cable company. Alongside of <laughs> Microsoft. Well, I thought they were going to kill all the Microsoft points, so they're not going to just kill them and say, sorry, use them by this date and it's over. They might they, they might, might end up doing that. But at like when they when they launch and start to accept real money, they're still going to accept Microsoft points too. So they're not going to convert anybody's Microsoft points and they're not going to just say it's it's useless, at least not right away. You're just going to be not eventually there just won't be any cards left with that you can buy to keep adding. Yeah, it's probably going to be the case. Yeah. Well, you know what this is. You know what uh, Microsoft is missing out on here. They're missing out on uh, AOL Mail. That's what they need in here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. was wondering if you were going to get that in there. <laughs> well, I had to get this in here. I, I found this article, and I just and it's. I, I find it absolutely amazing that AOL is still trying to survive in this internet world. Uh, <laughs> Is there, is there anybody that uh, you don't want to smack in the back of the head if you when when if you hear you've got mail in the background? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I dated a girl not too long ago. This is a, a few years back, but not too long ago, and uh, she was insistent on using AOL. Her and her mom. And mm. it's, at that point, I was I said, "What's wrong with me?" Because <laughs> they're clearly a lost cause. Why am I here with this person? <laughs> <laughs> There's. There's there's people I know that still use Netscape as a browser. Com uh, CompuServe. Remember that? <laughs> CompuServe. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, uh, spicy Wiener at CompuServe.net. Really? CompuServe? <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, uh, I haven't loved that one in a while. No. CompuServe and what was the other with the dog? Lycos, was it? Lycos? Oh, that, to come, that was much later, though. Copy that was a lit, yeah, that was quite yeah. lit, yeah. <laughs> oh, AOL, go to bed and don't come back anymore. Really. Please don't. Okay, uh, also Microsoft, uh, not uh, Microsoft, Nintendo. Nintendo has the uh, the Wii U that uh, we all know is, is, is just still going to fail because, you know, they're, they're releasing a device and then games will s eventually follow. But won't necessarily <laughs> follow at launch, right? Wasn't there that whole? Wasn't that uh, one week's of stories? Not recently, but where they said that they were releasing the unit, and these are this is uh, the release um, <laughs> games that are not necessarily releasing at the same time as the unit. So you can go ahead and buy this Wii U and not have really much of anything to play. So maybe that's why they're also trying to team up with Unity. Unity 3D, I think, is uh, the the group that they're trying to tie together with. Isn't that what this yeah. movie was? Yeah. So. Yeah. This is this is the uh, the built the um, the development pr uh, platform for making video games on uh, various consoles as well as a PC browser uh, mobile that we've talked about a few other times. Which maybe if you picked up on one of the earlier releases of it, you got it for free to fool around with. And I'm just bringing this up because as long as you're ready to jump through all kinds of fiery hoops for Nintendo. Then all you have to do is get yourself a license for Unity and start making games. There are some incredible hoops to jump through if you want to become a licensed developer for Nintendo. You have to go through the full approval process of being a full company. Uh, here's the game I'm going to make. This is what the game's going to look like. Are you? Sh will you please let me in? As it's, it's a, uh, you have to give them references and blood samples. Yep, you, you've got to already <laughs> have existing work. urine sample. Urine, yeah. <laughs> you you cannot. Yep. Um, develop anything for Nintendo to sell um, without already having something 
available for sale. So you, you can't have anything on Nintendo as be your first game. There is another way. You have to have a company that has a game out there uh, back you, sort of like a, almost like a partner. Yeah. So Foil's company will back anybody that wants to put something <laughs> on it. <laughs> but, but there's a catch. There's probably a, a, a market share that must be given up. You also have to buy hot wings. Hot wings? Yeah. Hot wheels. I love hot wheels. Hot pants. Foil, foil likes garlic. Uh, no, I do not bribe like him. It. Bribe him easily with garlic uh, bagels and lox <laughs> cream cheese. That is not what I ordered. And uh, <laughs> he was Dunkin raging about it this morning. Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> is going to get a few words from me after this show. I have their. Wait. <laughs> what? I went to Dunkin' Donuts this morning and asked for uh, egg and cheese, and they gave me a, a garlic bagel. Wow. <laughs> Keeps the vampires away, man. Yeah. Mm. Okay. That was quite the side topic. All right. OnLive is, <laughs> uh, it is reportedly sold. Supposedly, OnLive has been sold for close to four, again? $5 million. Again. No, this is still the same sale, I think. I don't think it's been a resale of a sale of a sale. But this says something. This says something about the, uh, doesn't it? Doesn't it say something about the the state of what streaming games is is today? It's sort of like a everybody's trying but it's not really working kind of deal, isn't it? I think I think it kind of is. Well, Gaikai, uh, they got out. Yeah. Pretty pretty clean, but who knows if that's going to work for Sony? They sold it. Yeah, they sold three hundred eighty million dollars of stuff to Sony, yeah. right? And they yeah. sold it to Sony, which I don't understand. Gaikai sold it to Sony. Which makes sense to go onto the PlayStation or some of their TVs or something like that. Or does it? And because they have a PlayStation. Yet, aren't they also like teaming up big time with Samsung? Which is really yeah. a different company altogether. Right. I was kind of wondering the same thing too. Because I saw those, those two in very close proximity to one another. Like Sony or Samsung's going to implement it on their TVs. And then they get bought by Sony. It's like, how does that work um, for, for either company? Um, and then I think Gaikai did their their business probably a bit smarter too because um, the they had this this white label service where basically other companies approached Gaikai and said, "Look, we want instantaneous demos. Can can we can pay you and uh, and just provide us with the service?" And that's pretty much what happened. Like I know EA pay Gaikai every time somebody played a Dead Space demo. And it wasn't like this weird thing where there were there were this there was this entire service all unto itself. It's like, like on live. <laughs> yeah. Play a song yeah. and get and get a royalty. Yeah. Wow. I think they I think they you know what? On live I I would have been happier if they gave out tablets rather than console systems. Like I would have. When, when, when they were given those away, yeah, I would. yeah, they gave out they gave away free consoles at one uh, at, a, at a PAX show last year, not this year. Um, not not, really not a, this year. They were no, surprisingly yeah. absent this year. <laughs> the way they were. I looked at the console. I, I I really didn't turn it on. I looked at the hardware a little bit, and then I gave them away because they're they would they were apparently too hard to hack and. Um, that's essentially what I was looking at. I was like, "Hey, what can I do with the?" Oh, I can't. Nothing. Actually, actually, it's... I had two of them. Yeah. So did I. I actually had three because I was Canadian. They decided they had to give <laughs> an extra one. <laughs> give they it to Canada. They were, they were like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's five thousand people here that aren't going to get them, but we'll give the Canadian guy three of them. <laughs> <laughs> we really want to make sure we get these consoles up in Canada. Okay. <laughs> I had to oh, pay yeah, extra for my luggage. <laughs> Speaking of conferences, I heard that the latest uh, uh, Comic Con went poorly, very poorly. The New York Comic Con? Yep. Uh, poorly in the way of in, in, in the noise? direction of games. Uh, there were uh, there was a poor showing of games. Uh, my partner uh, that that I work on apps and games and that kind of stuff with, he said he went there and an hour later he left because he walked through the whole show was bored and that was enough. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, I always feel like yeah. the New York one is just the like the bastard child of the San Diego one. Think, <laughs> well, you oh, know what? We'll, we'll do it, th but nobody it, cares. They, they've they've started to make it the 
and, and I'm glad they're starting to differentiate where a comic con is more geared around pop culture and comics mm -hmm. and they're moving away from the games and they're, you know, there's, there's a little bit of games there. And then at video game things, they're making it. So it's pop culture and video games with a little bit of comic stuff. They're not, they're not over inundating any one genre with, with a whole bunch of outside crap. And like for a while there, you didn't know what you were going to get when you went to a video game conference. It could have just been flooded with, with uh, comic stuff. And, and now you, you, you're starting to go, you're starting to see where, uh, and even I've noticed it at PAX, there was less non gaming stuff, uh, there, it was still there, but it was less of it. And, uh, I just went to the, the Edmonton pop culture comic con here and there was, there was only one video game, uh, developer set up there, but for the most part, it was all pop culture and comics. So I'm, I'm, glad that they're starting to differentiate that and that's i think what we're seeing in the new york comic con and and there was comments about it as well about the uh uh san diego comic con where it was mm. more yeah. it was I'm more well. like, if you're going if you want to if you're going to comic con you're really not going for getting video games yeah no because i want i i'd love to go to the san diego one but i'm not going there to see games i'm going to see comics you're going to see the nerd porn keep zooming in yeah. on our chest there <laughs> 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 the comic -Con sign. That, that, that there you go yeah see, sure it is doing. sure it is um, <laughs> oh <laughs> now pan over pan <laughs> over <laughs> <laughs> you're going and, and i i noticed that there was lots of nerd porn there there was no there was no no no, no. what they, they tried they tried but the reports no, I no, got no, from no. more than at one the, person was no. at what? I, I'm talking. I'm talking at the Edmonton one here. Oh, there was okay. there was some girls dressed up as droids. They were the droids I was looking for. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> even Fox. Even Fox made a comment. He's so old that no, I never. Mind. <laughs> uh, you got Fox to go to it. Yeah, Fox and I went Very to it. Good. We had a we had a pretty good time. Very good. Fox he uh, for those of you who he has got us. he has got a serious serious problem when it comes to anything that says Batman on it. He'll just <laughs> throw his wallet. He'll throw his wallet at the guys. Like a batarang. And, uh, and yeah, <laughs> gotta go like Batman Anonymous or something. Batman Anonymous. I feel like I'm very close to that. I yeah. <laughs> I got like fifty comic books here, of Batman. Oh no, it's, Batman. he's he's also into the uh, what? What was he buying? He was buying the uh, the black and white statuettes. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So the collectible oh. stuff. That's serious. Nope. What are you looking around at, Foil? Uh, one more com. I'm just looking to see if the cable company is coming. Uh, one more company uh, <laughs> that I want to talk about uh, that'll that'll break us right into the, the the game world is IGN. IGN is also up for sale. Uh, we're talking about things being sold all over the place. Well, this one is too, and you can now grab it for the low, low asking price of one hundred million dollars. And believe me, that is a low price because that is cheap. Yeah. Seven years ago, it sold for six hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah. Well, what does that yeah. tell you? Is well, I is find a very interesting purchase? about this. <laughs> no, what I find very interesting about this is IGN sort of last year, maybe the, the a year and a half ago, it started kind of going. You know what? We're going to start doing reviews properly. We're going to not mm -hmm. take the big bag of money, or well, we'll take the big bag of money, but we'll um, <laughs> we're we'll not still gonna be trash like, your game if it's shit. Yeah, exactly. And and the most recent one was the last Call of Duty, where they seriously came out and said pretty much what we've kind of said with it. You know, I'm not going to go into that again because we've been over yeah. like a million times. They, but you know they, what I mean? They mailed they mailed it in. Yeah, and. Um, they went. They came out and said that, and it was one of the very few big sites that actually bothered. And now I find it very interesting that they're running out of money and are needing to sell. That's well, the way they it also, works. They also um, have their hands in uh, Ask Men, which is a online or is it a real magazine? I don't know. It has to do with magazines. Um, Game Spy, which those of you who have ever played the first Borderlands know yeah. what I'm talking or, about, or any multi, any multi any multiplayer game. Prior the to, I, yeah, yeah, seriously, yeah. that was yeah. that was how we arcade. that was how we played at Call of Duty, yeah. the original one, and that was how we played Medal of Honor, the original ones, so. and Game Stats was another big one over there. Yeah. Ooh, uh, other other good Honor. assets they sold off. What's that? I have a Medal of Honor topic, but keep going. Okay. 
Well, uh, I wanted to go from this into uh, what's going on over at Kickstarter, talking about, uh, you know, we have these sales and, and stuff like that. Well, what happens uh, if, you know, you go you start this whole big Kickstarter program, right, that, that everybody is, keeps throwing money at, and it doesn't work out, and the Kickstarter goes under? Well, the, the Kickstarter usually doesn't just sell. What happens is it's uh, it's much worse than that. But I'm looking for the picture while I'm also trying to talk about it. What are it's you, not working what are you talk, for me. Which one are you talking about? The one that I put up there? Yeah, I'm talking about the uh, the fully okay. funded Kickstarter that goes belly up. Haunts yep. the man's Maccabee or whatever. I, th this is one that I was <laughs> unfamiliar with. Macabre, thank you. Come on, I have the picture. There's the picture. Gosh darn it. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this one was fully funded. A fully funded Kickstarter program. Uh, how much money did they ask for? I, I did actually didn't notice that. They, they asked, asked for, for twenty five thousand, and they got which is they got just under thirty. So they got twenty nine thousand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. and yeah, so after it met it, met its goal, then the money from Kickstarter goes to the developer, mm -hmm. and like two months later, up oh, it starts off two months later that they cancel single player, right? Yeah. They wanted single player and multiplayer for this game. <laughs> I don't know what kind of game it is. I was just assuming it was RPG, but I don't know. Because they all are that's, now, right? Strategy or RPG. Yeah. Yeah. And then what happens? And then then uh, October, it shut down. Yeah. But does well, everyone so what get was the reasoning? Back? Well, they say that there's a lot of reasons. And one of, but the, the biggest one that the developer is, is talking about is that uh, he couldn't afford to have programmers online. They spent, you know, they got twenty-eight thousand dollars. They spent some of it on advertising, on T-shirts, and shipping, on sound because they didn't do you... their own sound. Oh my god! <laughs> on, lic on licensing the F mod uh, engine, you know, that's it's for just audio. Got like thirty grand. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this games are, you know, it's expensive to make. But I mean, seriously, did you not sit down and have a budget meeting of some kind and went, look, this is exactly, and surely with Kickstarter, you always kind of. Overestimate. So if you need like thirty, you ask for like forty. Well, they were paying salaries. They weren't well, yeah, just a, an indie studio yeah. trying to make it with whatever money they could. No, they were paying full-on salaries. Fifty-five hundred dollars a month they were spending. So they're just idiots, in other words. Well, no, yeah. it was it was essentially this is what I said about these Kickstarter projects. What you're 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 investing money in something that. They may just, it may just be a scam. And that's what it sounds like this was. It's like, hey, we've got this cool, uh, cool storyline that we've got put together. And we've got some concept art. And we've got somebody that's pretty good at uh, drop, dragging and dropping stuff on the screen. And they come up with this screenshot and say, here's our proof of concept. It's working. And then it's like, hey, awesome. And we made our money out of it. All right, cut and run. And that's essentially what they did. Well, did, did the, does everyone get their money back? How does that work? No. No. No, no because it... It was awesome. funded. It met the goal. Once it meets the goal, then Kickstarter pulls the money out of your account because you're. It's like doing. A, it's like sponsoring someone that, you know, if I run a hundred laps, will yeah. you give me? You know, so they, the they did their hundred laps, and and here's their money, and there you go. Now you can do whatever you want with this money because there is no liability for it. There is no accountability for it, and that's what's starting to become apparent. And now. You you look like this is a small one. What happens if this happens to a larger one? Should have been larger. Some of these if they to some business. some of these well some of these ones. Mm. Uh, for example, take a look at uh, Oculus. Mm. Not saying not saying this is going to happen, but take a look at Oculus. They wanted what did they want fifty thousand dollars, and they've got almost a million. No, didn't they make like five million? F okay, so five million. <laughs> Four million, mm -hmm. five million, something like that. Yeah. What's no. there is not because they met their goal. Boop, gone. Could be, and they yes. can just they can just go tits up and he, whoever gave them money gave them money. It's like thanks for the party, guys. And you think they you know and obviously they didn't spend all that money in this could be fake uh, deployment of all this advertising, all these uh, getting going around the game developers saying, hey, do you like this with this prototype that isn't real? I don't know. Maybe it does work, and they just don't plan on producing it. For all the money that they spent with, at all these shows, with all the videos and everything, they could 
still turn around and have made this a scam if they wanted it they, to be. They wanted <laughs> they wanted two hundred fifty thousand dollars. They got uh, done with two point four million. So that's uh, oh, that's, that was a, that's, is that what they that's it for Oculus? Yeah, yep. I th- I really I don't know why I thought it was four million. Okay, so okay. that's uh, but, that's quite but also, a few. Uh, yeah, another thing I just wanted to add to this too: this Mob Rules games that that we're talking about here also received forty two thousand five hundred from a charitable foundation that it used primarily to pay salaries. So not just this, not just the thirty thousand from from Kickstart, there was another forty two thousand that they got from a charitable foundation. So, so they got seventy two thousand dollars. Yeah, that they said that they used primarily to pay salaries. That's that's great. It, it just seemed like total mismanagement on there. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. And I mean, it, it kind of shows as well that you don't, you can make you just because you've got a shitload of money doesn't mean you're going to make a good video game. <laughs> of course. Yeah. I mean, uh... <laughs> yeah. This it really feels like they should be working as an indie studio, and you don't turn around and say, "Well, here's a quote." Then in August, I knew Jonathan was going to leave in the fall, so I brought in Josh, which added an extra two grand per month to the bill. <laughs> Yeah, like. <laughs> Wait, what? I mean, if you look at somebody like the guys behind um, Project Zomboid, those guys are ma- literally making that sitting in their flat. There's two. Or there's like three of them. They, I don't think any of them have an actual job. They're just literally sitting in in a tiny three bedroom apartment by themselves coding this game. Probably and living on got, ramen noodles. Yeah, and then you've got <laughs> these guys that are like. Just basically throwing money away because they're just too dumb to realize. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Like you're buying T-shirts and licensing tools that you, in many ways, not ready for. I'm sure, unless your game was was heavily reliant on on audio. I don't see the reason to to license like well, FMOT right away. It, it it has to be heavily relied on audio because that screenshot is all the coding and programming they did. The rest <laughs> is all audio. <laughs> What you got to do now? Best gotta... game ever. <laughs> is is F mod that expensive to license? I mean, some of these game engines come with F mod. Yeah, and then, <laughs> exactly. So can't you just get a game engine and have it incorporated in there already? I don't know. But like seventy five, you could have made your own audio. I wonder if engine. Call of Duty is going. And, and see, this is this is what I don't understand with what's going on with the entire game industry. We've got Kickstarter funding indie games, which some of them are indie, some of them are not indie. Yeah. It's it's it places like EA and places like Activision looking for crowdfunding, crowdsource funding for their own titles. Like, what are we going to see? See, we're going to see COD next year on on Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah, right. Help pay for the same game that you just played. Mm. Well, I mean, it's, it goes back to the Kickstarter thing of having like people donating money or whatever for things that are drawn on napkins. <laughs> yes, literally. <laughs> it's like, and, and you have, I remember seeing a comic book on there. Yeah, we're going to do this comic book series. And it was literally an A4 sheet of paper with just like a drawing in it. And that was it. <laughs> and people are funding, like, and they met their goal, I think. And it was just like, yeah, we went like 10 grand. Oh, we yeah, got twenty. This this could be the start of this See? whole new uh, bursting of bubbles. You know, we had the internet that bursted a bubble back in the, what was that the nineties, and now we yeah. have these games that are coming up with these self funded things like through Kickstarter or through whatever other means, that could be sort of turning into these little empires. We have Zynga or mine, whoever's doing Minecraft and those kind of things. We turn around and Zynga. What is Zynga worth right now? Well, right now you t- you ask uh, J.P. Morgan, which is a big financial firm who's uh, doing estimations. They're saying it's pretty much worth nothing at all. <laughs> I mean, Zynga it put out some really big games on Facebook, on mobile, you know, those kind of platforms, but it, they, they were, you know, talk of the town, and now it's nothing. Mm. And so that could be yeah. very well coming to what's the same though. Yeah, Kickstarter could become that. It could be like everybody throws all their money into it, and then boom, they all fail at once. Yeah. I still find it kind of difficult how you can um, estimate a, like a net worth of a company that only exists on the internet, but. Yeah. That's so different. <laughs> Cause yeah, yeah, you internet, have, you have no exist. physical assets. Yeah, exactly. Like the internet doesn't. It's a, a group of servers connected to each other. There is no. But I mean, internet. That's, this started <laughs> with Warcraft players paying 
real money for virtual items. And then someone thought, you know what? I can charge for virtual oxygen. I can charge for virtual oxygen. Yeah. Oh, look. Uh, Hi, Fox. Good job chiming in there. (laughs) Uh, He heard we were talking about him. Yeah, must have. (laughs) I I partly attribute it to dumb investors. It's like you all build your own hype and then believe it about some of these companies. It's like, so Zynga goes public and gets these, these crazy valuations. And I'm not an investor, but I can sort of read between the lines and, and or at the very least, I should say, I, I know something about the area in which they're involved. And I can say, look, there's no way this company is worth the amount of money that you all say it's worth. It's like, how is Farmville worth that much money? Like, where do you see a future? Because these types of things rely on hype trains. And once people get bored, the train crashes. And that's exactly what's happening with Zynga. You know what? It, you, you, it's funny you mentioned it, you mentioned Far, Farmville because, you know, all that virtual corn you're planting and harvesting <laughs> has to feed all of the starving masses in the virtual world of Warcraft horde. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an offsetting, you know, you call it, you call it gold farming. You're actually corn farming, but it, it, it's got a market. See that's now that's a brilliant that's idea. That's sarcasm, internet. It's sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. What you do in Farmville affects your World of Warcraft account. Oh uh, no, brilliant. we're not a we're not what's your name going on that whole worldly a save the world video game stuff. Jane. But I mean, okay, yeah. But I mean, you're farming. <laughs> this is what I don't get: is you're farming, so you plant something, and then if you're a typical farmer, you're going to go downtown for the next six months every day and sit at the co-op cafe and have a uh, coffee and talk to everybody else, all the other farmers that have planted their crops and you're just waiting for it to grow. Once it grows, <laughs> then you're going to say, you know what? It was too, too dry. It was too wet. It was too sunny. It was too cold. And you're going to bitch about how you didn't get a big enough harvest and you're going to put it off. And then all oh, the frost is going to hit because you were sitting around doing dick all and, uh, and you don't get your crop off in time. And then the price of grain goes up and, and then you flee poverty, and you're driving around in Mercedes trucks <laughs> and and two million dollar combines, saying that uh, ah, I'm such a poor farmer. Mm. Well, and you do this all virtually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to totally divert to to uh, too much on financial news, but I think the reason why this thing with the Zynga happens is because you have this new company that comes out, and they know that people are going to get all hyped up about it. You know, hype. They're they're excited. So the financial industry see this, and they're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to buy a little bit, and then when it goes up, I'm going to sell it. They're not looking for the long haul in here. They're looking to make a few bucks really quick and then move. But then when it starts to move up, other people that don't know a lot about the whole financial thing start saying, wow, look at all these big companies that are buying into it. I want some. And so they start thinking, okay, I'm going to give them my money. And, and they buy and buy, but they don't sell. And then they forget. And then all of a sudden, they come out with something like this. It's worth nothing. Everybody loses all the financial. Uh, they lose their money. There's a no more um, value. There's no more confidence left in the consumer. And everything else starts to fall next to it. And it just starts imploding the whole industry. Well, I mean, I mean, Zynga started buying up popular games and popular apps and, and things like that. And as they bought them up, they were breaking them. Um, yeah. One of the ones that I used to play on, on uh, my iPhone, iPad was, was Draw Something. It worked awesome. Zynga bought it and it went to shit. It, mm-hmm. It's broke. It doesn't work anymore. And their customer relations, their customer service is horrible. <laughs> And it's then, non-existent. Uh, it's yeah. because nobody at Zynga knows nothing. Yep. Yeah. I was looking to apply for a job at Zynga, and I was just sort of looking at the open positions. And um, it was really funny that one of the positions, I forgot what the title was, but the attributes, the positive attributes, and what will most likely get you the job is if you had a really great experience um, with math and spreadsheets and like all this you know, weird stuff. And it was it was very obvious that this was about trying to addict people and trying to squeeze every last penny out yes, of them. It and it was basically like, if you're an Excel master, you got a job with us. And it's like, what? <laughs> 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 mm-hmm. Of course it is. Uh, 
And um, but but people don't stick around with that stuff for too long. And and like you said, Strider, they they try to. It's like all right, well, our uh, our cash cow is starting to dry up. We need to buy the company so we can sort of stay relevant. But yeah, if you're gonna buy a company and break it, then you might as well have just not bought the company at all. And um, I could be wrong about this, but I'm almost certain there was some news not too long after buying um, OMG Pop. I think that's the company that may draw something. Like the, some of the head guys in charge of that company ended up leaving, and so it's like, you know, now you bought this headless company and you just wasted a lot of money. Yes, All right. Messages, don't be Zynga. <laughs> don't be Zynga. <laughs> Just don't be Zynga. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to some games. Some uh, some some indie type development games that we've been uh, looking forward to. Primal Carnage is one, right? Yeah. Uh, Playing that. Go- I haven't had time to do much of anything, but uh, <laughs> yes, right now, if you did pre-order it, you should be in on the beta, the multiplayer beta that's going on right now. This is where it pits well, puts you know dinosaurs versus people, so you can be that pterodactyl and come down and swoop down on people or it's uh, the t-rex. it's the little yeah the, the big t-rex is cool but that little the little velociraptors man they're i, I was playing against breezy and uh fucking had a riot because you'd be creeping through the bushes and you're you're crouched down and the little dinosaur's tail is swishing like a cat about to pounce on something <laughs> and you jump on and yeah because you're when you're the when you're the human when you're the you know on the human side of it it's it's so creepy there's you don't see it and then this dinosaur comes flying at you it's <laughs> it's actually a fucking fun game and you know what it's priced right it's priced right as a multiplayer game it's a uh, very left for dead esque in that mm-hmm. team play is key mm-hmm. it's uh, um, unreal engine sorry is it unreal engine yes it is it's yeah, unreal engine yeah. Um, and, uh, it's, it's priced right for a multiplayer game. Uh, in fact, I think it's a bargain at a multiplayer game, uh, priced for 15 bucks on Steam. And at PAX, the PR guy had one of the greatest mustaches I've ever seen. So, uh, yes, clearly reason to buy it. <laughs> that was an epic mustache. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see, what, do I have any videos I can actually play on this from that? <laughs> Primal Carnage, right? Yep. Yeah, Primal Carnage. I do have this video. I don't know what the volume's going to be like right now. There's a Strider with mods on air. There's that mustache. I'm here with Primal Carnage. All he needs is a monocle and a top hat. And he's going to tell us yeah. where we've come It'd be like steampunk. Last, last year, yeah. we actually saw it. And, uh, I know we, as, a, as a community, we've been watching this game progress, anxiously waiting for it to this release. This is one of the PAX videos. You guys can go watch it. Happened. On, the, on our YouTube channel. So, uh, I'm Garrett. Yeah. I'm the assistant producer with Lukewarm Media. Uh, we're the developers right. of Primal Carnage. So it's a good interview I'm fine there video, that you uh, video recording there. <laughs> if only we knew who did that. <laughs> if, if only we knew who, the, who was holding the camera on that. Look at how still they're holding it. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing barricade. Human barricade. Yeah. And I was trying not to fall over while holding the camera. <laughs> Yeah, he does need a monocle, I know. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, so check it that check that out over on Steam. And uh, if you want, pre-order it. 15 bucks, and you can start playing. Still, start playing now, right? It's still open. It's not going to... Yeah. It's not a closed... Oh, game. yeah. Right. Yep. And go and, over to I my mean, YouTube channel and watch that video. Yeah. yeah. And even even though it is a beta, it's still... It's it's pretty polished. There's, mm-hmm. there's still some issues that, you know, need addressing. But for the most part, it's a fantastically fun game. Well, yeah, some of them do have issues. Um, uh, we've played at least one of those. I don't know if you want to talk about that one. Or if you want to move on to Hawken, who has a closed beta for stuff going on right now. What they're supposed to, In another week from now, they're supposed to have an open beta, I think it is. Yeah, Hawken. it's supposed to be coming up soon. Yeah. Uh, that's the Mech Warrior game, which I actually have a video here, so you can see what's going on with Hawken. Uh, which is also going to be compatible with that uh, Oculus thing. Oculus. Yep, the riff. Yeah. I think it works. Well. I, I think I and and that's what I was just going to say. I think the Oculus Rift inside of uh, a Mech Warrior is going to work very well because you can actually turn your head around and look around inside your Mech Warrior while piloting it. Whereas when right. we played it in first-person shooter, looking 
where you were going all the time was a little bit yeah tough to get used to i would you know it's tough to steer when you look and it's like oh crap i, I accidentally mm. moved my head a little bit now I'm looking well, it was, there, so I'm i pointing. found the worst was uh trying to aim with it you have yeah to aim aiming with your head yeah. yeah which is really mm. end up in a neck brace <laughs> <laughs> but like with this, it's like if you do it in a plane simulator or something, you could be flying plane, hold it, you know, you get your joystick and you've got your, your traditional <laughs> control. <joystick>. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then, you know, you got this on and you can look to your, to your left, your right, you can look behind you and you can see like, the pirate seat as you're in it and that'd be cool. Yeah, this game is not about being in a, a mech warrior type setting. It's It's more it's... about a first person shooter with a new little with with a new scenery, with something a little bit new about it. Yeah, it's I haven't played too many um MacWarrior games in the past. So but but I've my recollection of them was was that there's something kind of fun that appeals to a certain complexity to it, just kinda of operating your mech while also being in combat with people. And this game is nothing like that. It's it's very straightforward, very arcadey in a sense, and how simplistic the controls are. Um, but there's a lot of customization and there's a, a lot of tacticality to it, to the gameplay. It's, it's a surprising amount um, since every little attribute of your mech um, is kind of critical because nothing really lasts forever. Um, whether it's like the, your, the speed you move at, how far you can fly, reload times, all that weird stuff. Um, it all comes together to make a pretty, pretty good experience for the most part. Um, but I wouldn't say it's for the people who want a real simulation. Not at all. Even though I mean, mm. technically can't really simulate a, a mech, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can. What? Uh, there is a Japanese company out there selling actual mechs if you want to buy one. <laughs> the only mech warrior game I ever remember playing was, um, was Future Cop. Future LA, Cop, Future yes. Cop. Yeah, remember I that? I know that one. <laughs> oh, feel free to Google that one. That was a great game. I love that. Yeah. It's on like the original PlayStation, I think, like nineteen ninety seven, ninety eight, around there. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, did I don't? Yeah. I, so, so you do want to mention Natural Selection? Isn't that the one that you that we got to play a little bit of together? Yeah. Yeah. We we all jumped in the Natural Selection beta. Natural Selection right. two, I should say. And this uh, is also very, this is also somewhat similar to the idea of uh, different creatures against humans. So it is humans against more like an alien type alien. creature. Yeah. And most I think everything that we played took place like underground. I don't remember anything being above ground. Yeah. Didn't feel it's above under- ground. Oh, it's right. it's closed environments. Right. Which is not a problem. What may have been a little bit of a problem was you know the balancing. There there it just yeah it was very odd the way the game felt unbalanced. Um. And you know what? I'm not even sure which way it was unbalanced. It was, you know, I don't, <laughs> no, I don't I know which way. I don't, I don't think it's as imbalanced. If and and I think Ham and I uh, discussed this a little bit more in depth. I think this is going to be a very cult following type of game. Yeah. Um, I think that it's going to have its hardcore players, and because if if your commander, what it is, uh, anybody that's not familiar with the game it's uh it's a first person shooter-esque game where you're humans versus aliens but as well as the first person you have a uh, uh, a commander and your commander has the overview of the whole map and he's the one that drops in your rts elements mm-hmm. where you have to have resources to build this and to research this and all that and if your commander isn't doing his job and upping your trees you end up very ill-matched against the other team if their commander is doing that. And I think that's where the balancing issue comes in, is if you get someone not experienced in that commander seat, you end up just getting your ass handed to you. Yeah, which is what, what kind of... Because I found that, that brief sort of like a couple hours we played it or whatever, I found that there was almost no point playing as the aliens. Because it was just like you walk on the corner and you're, oh, I'm dead. Oh, yeah. I'm dead again. And seeing, I've I've won games as as the aliens, but really it comes think, out. But yeah, I think to... that's probably what that is. Then is it's the fact yeah. that you're right. It's the it's the just the commander isn't there, so they're not upgrading your your weapons or your yeah. claws. Or now anything. see, uh, Ham got tutored through being a commander 
that one. Oh, game. yeah. And That's and right. I won yeah. that match. Yeah. Yeah. And you Surprisingly. won Surprisingly. And I'm no good at RTS at all. And, uh, yeah, it was a guy just kind of telling me what to do. And as I was in, I was doing it in early delayed fashion because he's like, now do this, now do this. And I'm just like, where's that button? I don't know exactly. And yeah. I still ended up winning. Now, and, and that said, <laughs> the, you know, it is, it is, I'm going to say this loosely, elitist in the sense that it's, it's, got this learning curve and until you're pa- over that learning curve hump yeah. you're not going to be having fun playing this game however the people that are playing it for the most part are all about getting more people to play it and they're they're more than happy to explain things to you and to to tutor you on what to do a case in point is is ham's tutelage yeah. well that's, uh, that's what they were doing <laughs> that, uh... yeah at uh, uh, PAX, if you remember, they had like the middle, they had like six screens to each side, and then the middle screens and each ones were, this is the commander screen, yeah. and they had the, the dev kind of like right next to the guy going, you know, do this, and then pretty much what you what, what happened to you. Hmm. Uh, it, having a good commander in that game is, is critical to, to winning. Um, and I'd say I like it in the sense that um, and not to bring up an old game and, and take away attention from this, but uh, Nuclear Dawn, which um, was on the Steam engine, it's on sale on Steam. It's a similar thing where you have a, a first-person shooter melding with RTS, and you've also got a commander there. And um, it's, but they play differently. It's that is has a symmetrical um, gameplay, whereas Natural Selection Two is very asymmetrical, and you've really got to know how to how both um, sides operate. To, to use them to their, their, their full advantage. Um, but if, if you're curious about how this game might work, I think Natural Selection, or not uh, Natural Selection, Nuclear Dawn has a demo on Steam, even. You can try that out. And uh, it's, it's fun, but it, 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 there's a learning curve, though. You, you have to get over in order to, to really not be so upset every time you die. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're getting upset every time you die, you should really not play video games. No. You should be playing Call of Duty. That's what you should be doing. Yeah, you might That's as well right. yeah, yeah. just buy an Xbox, on Xbox. Play Call of Duty. <laughs> watch, <laughs> watch someone jingle keys in front of you and rage quit every time you get killed. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. Also, let's let's talk a little bit about what's going on over the Mods Online, we- Mods Online well, website. Well, before we do oh. that, let me just mention the, uh, the Medal of Honor topic I had because um, okay. it's kind of brief. Um Medal of Honor Warfighter, um, the review copies for media outlets, you know, to, to review the game, are being shipped to the big, whatever, magazines, websites, on day one of release. So, in other words, they're not getting review copies before mm. the game comes out. Hmm. Medal of Honor Warfighter, okay. Mm-hmm. That, uh, that does not say good things about that. I don't know. The sh- it should be multiplayer no, beta, though, right? No, in, yeah, yeah, in my mind, that, that there's is a, a beta on right now. red flag. Because if you're sure not releasing... On... Well, no, the reason is is because they don't want it stolen. Or it's just EA's suck. Or... Well, I think it's a bit of both. It's They don't want it copied, and they also, it's that thing of like putting an embargo on reviews until day one of release. That, that just says to me this game is going to be terrible. Yeah, well, the, the last Medal of Honor was was less than impressive. Too. Uh, yeah, true. Yeah. In in playing, you know, visually it looks great. The but si- once I, you know, start the getting single, into it, it's the single player was good. The single player was on the Unreal Engine, and they they did a good job of it. The multiplayer, on the other hand, <laughs> and it was because so they did it on two different engines and by two different studios. It made no sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Right. Yeah, it does make no sense. Just release two separate games. Stop trying this. Well, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't just two different studios. It was two different engines. Yeah, that's what I mean. It was the the multiplayer was on the Frostbite, so it was basically Battlefield. Literally, yeah. it was. Like well, it was Battlefield Light. Yeah, without the, well, yeah, without it didn't have the destruction. It didn't. It was just like, um, all right, I'll just go and play Battlefield on low settings then. <laughs> Um, but the single player, I think splash damage did it. Was it splash? Damage? No, um, something. High, I know what their logo is, but I can't remember the name of them. Danger close or something like that. Danger sounds. Did the single player? Right. It was. It was good. Yeah. It, it, I. I kind of enjoyed it. It was. 
they got away from the Call of Duty thing of having like 14,000. 14,000. 14,000 okay. frozen Welshies. We'll, we'll never know now <laughs> what he was going to say. Yeah. Well, she has just received his preview copy of. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you guys! I'm going home. <laughs> uh, all right, so I guess now we'll talk about mods online. Is that sure. right? Okay, what's going on over at mods? <laughs> what's going on over at mods online right now is we have a new um, indie dev of the month, and yes. I had the image already to show. And now Tudon Games. There you go, Ravaged is the, two is, dawn the game that, yeah. is the game they're putting together. Yes, Two Dawn. Yep, Two Dawn Games. Uh, I yeah. got a chance to to uh, play with some of the devs, play their play their title, and uh, uh, do a little bit of a preview on it and all that fun stuff. It's a it's a uh, stop. But the noise is phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, uh, first person shooter uh, with with vehicles, uh, very, very heavily uh, around the vehicles, uh, a lot of realism in the first person aspects and uh, post-apocalyptic. It's very well done, in my opinion, and uh, it was actually very, very fun. Uh, looking for some other people that uh, in our little circle to pick it up and we can get in on it and do some play. I'm, I'm probably going to end up picking it up. Um, a, a lot of Comments that I've seen say that this is the uh, this is the multiplayer that Rage should have had, and that's that's pretty right. enough to excite me. Hmm. You know what? I I really agree with that, and in fact, in 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 so many ways, it is the multiplayer that Rage should have had. And yeah, yeah I, well, this this is this is a really small studio, right? There's there's only about um oh, yeah. a dozen 11. people in it. Oh, yeah. eleven. Okay, yeah, eleven eleven people in the studio. It's a virtual studio. Uh, okay. There's developers in, in Sweden, the UK, and uh, in North America, uh, all all that fun stuff. They're they're really spread around the globe, and uh, it's again, I, I, there's there's uh, the review is up there, and they've done honestly, they've done a fantastic job with it. They uh, the a lot of the people from the team worked on other games prior to this. Uh, and took that expertise and their and their love and fun, uh, the things that they were good at in the other games, and brought them to this. And that that expertise really shows. It's officially released, isn't it? It is now officially released. It released on the seventeenth, okay. right, on Steam and other right. platforms. Um, right, but and, and this was a Kickstarter too. It was. Hey, you know what? It was a Kickstarter that uh, it it didn't have a very high goal. Uh, they they weren't looking to get, you know, to, to rape anybody with it, but uh, they 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 kept uh, they kept it they kept it pretty close to the chest, and they they developed the game. In their words, they developed the game for the love of the game. They, everybody else oh. had, you know, everybody on the team had day jobs. No one was doing this full time, and in fact, two dawn is because they were up to dawn, <laughs> on many days and many nights, working on this game. So. Labor of um, love, labor of love, exactly. And check it out. You know what? It is fantastic, and uh, it is again a multiplayer only. There's there's a couple maps that I, I just I, I couldn't stop playing. The one that's pictured with the Statue of Liberty is actually one of them. It's so fun. And the other one was ice the icebreaker map, uh, which is there's no vehicles in it, uh, and it's just they're just laid out so well. It is so. It is so apparent that these these developers uh, uh, knew what they were doing with the multiplayer aspect. It's just so apparent. So. And even better news, looks like there's a demo on Steam. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Morphous. Free. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> So I know I'll be doing it after the show, getting the demo, and I'm probably going to get it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Anything else you guys want to bring up? We've we've done our time here. 
I'm apparently not allowed to talk about EA because I crash whenever I do. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you I and Strider will. both have frozen Skype screens now. Oh, awesome. I, see, I did see... Oh, no, there we go. Okay. Mm. Uh, so I well. guess it is a good time to end it, yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's uh, not oh, he's fo Foil's watching for the Mafia. He is in Jersey. <laughs> uh, the Cable Mafia. Yes. That's the, the constant fear, isn't it? You have to like sit there with your shotgun and the, the Mafia's coming. <laughs> The uh, mafia is not coming. The mafia is always here. <laughs> always here. Well, come to Jersey, <laughs> gay Tony. Come to come to Jersey. We've got mafia. <laughs> the mafia lives here. <laughs> All right. Anything else you guys want to bring up? Uh, I don't have anything. But this yeah, time next week, Windows 8. <laughs> Yes, hopefully the uh, hopefully the internet holds. Uh, the internet worked out today. I don't I don't know what's going on. So maybe uh, maybe they'll show up and fix it next week. I don't know what's going to happen. I got to call them back. I guess, as we'll you know, they called uh, during the show. Yeah, we'll be doing some, uh, some gaming after the show since your internet held up. Hmm. I got to go. We're not going to waste it on playing last week's show because there wasn't one. So. No. Nope. <laughs> wow. I got a lot of images open. There we go. What's okay. going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Running through topics like mad. Yeah. Uh, then I guess. Then what? I, oh, geez, then I guess what I'll do is uh, I'll th I'll take the time to thank our hosts for taking the time out to chat today. Well, she thank you very much for joining us today. No problem. I have a closer for the show in here somewhere. Ham, thank you very much for joining us today. There it is. Glad to be here. And Strider, thank you for joining us today. It's always an adventure, and I got to actually throw something out there as well because uh, Grind Time mentioned the Firefall beta. Hop in the Firefall beta if you can, and this coming week is Firefall Fest, where you can play against people like Will Wheaton, the developers, a uh, couple of the Wheaton, um, a couple of uh, uh, a couple of other Fel Felicia, Felicia Day, Felicia, and, yeah, who wrote the Guild, which is actually pretty funny if you if you look for something to watch, and uh, <laughs> and uh, all that good stuff. That's so. Nice. Cool. Okay. Oh, and another yeah. thing. Don't yeah. post topics at the Mods Online forum asking how to make a name bot. <laughs> 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 oh, I haven't bot. seen one of those for a while. Well, that's good. <laughs> how do I make a GSC based aim bot? Well, start by, what is it? Alt F4? <laughs> Alt F4. <laughs> 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 Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Um, then, finally, I'm going to thank... Uh, yeah, here we go. I'll thank the fans of uh, ModsOnAir.com and the subscribing members of ModsOnline.com for making this show possible. Hopefully, we'll be back next weekend. And until then, go play some games. Have fun. And goodbye. Thanks for watching this week. And come back next Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern when we will broadcast another live show on live stream. Details for this and all past episodes can be found at ModsOnAir.com. We welcome your feedback via email at mailbag at modsonair.com, and please consider subscribing to modsonline.com to support our show. The opinions expressed by individuals on this program are not necessarily the opinions of our sponsors, owners, or partners. Your contact lens has just arrived. 1-800-CONTACTS? They can't have my brand. I have special eyes. Look. Look with your special eyes. My brand! <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs>